All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, today is March the 6th, 2023. Um, we have a bunch of really cool um, releases to talk about um, in the Parka project today. But just before we uh, start, um, the Parka project and um, therefore also this call um, follows the CNCF uh, code of conduct, even if we're not uh, a, a CNCF pro project, um, we follow that code of conduct. So TLDR, uh, be nice to each other. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, we can get started. So last week we had a couple of um, releases within the Parker project. So I'm going to be talking about real quick the um, Parker server pro um, releases, and then Kemal is going to talk uh, talk us through some of the highlights from the Parker agent release. So let me share. Um, my screen, I believe. You should be able to see my screen now. Yeah, OK. So um, V016, um, we've made a couple of uh, super cool changes. I think one of, my, one of my favorite changes is to actually remove the merge button. So every time um, you hit search, and I'll uh, show it in the Parker demo instance in a second as well. But um, where you used to hit merge, that happens automatically now when you um, hit the search button. So um, no longer do we um, need to do an additional click, which I think is pretty cool. And um, this is a really cool milestone for the project as a whole. Um, I think it's really cool that we have Manoj on the, on the call, actually, because uh, when Manoj uh, started contributing to the uh, project, one of the first uh, kind of RFCs that Manoj had written was about kind of improving the first time user experience. Um, and this very change was actually part of it, that we would automatically display some data. Um, and while there are still a couple of things that we want to do, uh, this was one of the major things. And one of the major things why we didn't do this was because we weren't quite as confident about the performance of the backend database as we are today. So that's essentially the, the reason to celebrate. Um, we are now in a place where we, we feel like the, the storage is fast enough that we can always, by default, run these queries. So I think you know, that's something, something we should recognize uh, in how far we've come as the, as the Parker project. So that's super cool. Um, we have a couple of really important changes uh, that I think we've talked about in this call before, but I just want to call out um, Monica and Matthias as well uh, for having worked on the on the step um, feature. So the way that you can think about the step is uh, theoretically we record at least when we record data with the Parka agent every ten seconds we get. Uh, potentially a data point for a single process throughout time, right? Um, now, if we look at, let's say, an entire day of um, of data, that's something like 8,600 uh, points. But our screen, even if we have relatively high resolution screens, let's say full HD or even 4K, we don't even have a single pixel for each of those data points. And so the step feature essentially tells uh, the back end, uh, for example, we can use it to, to tell it something like, I only have um, five, 500 pixels available. Uh, so only give me samples every 15 seconds or whatever the right answer is. right? Um, and that's what we can use the step feature for, so that only every, and the way that we ultimately ended up implementing it is so that only every three pixel do we have an actual data point. Uh, so this is very, very important and very helpful um, for dealing with large amounts of data, which you know, as we grow the project, the bigger the installations become, big, the bigger the load becomes, and so on. So very, very important milestone um, in the project. So big shout out to um, Monica and Matthias for working on this. Um, but really, you know, it, we do have to do a shout out to absolutely everyone in the in the project because this has been basically a year long um, journey to get here. There, we've improved the flame graph a bunch. Uh, Manoj has worked on that a, a ton, but also several other people have. Uh, the storage has is only in this shape because of several people's um, work. So 
really, really, we should recognize everyone who's who's touched this project essentially in the last year has probably had an, an impact on this. So yeah, we've had we have a, a bunch of really really cool other features uh, that we've already demoed here. So I'm I'm primarily going to show um, the um, merge button going away. So if we remember previously, if we hit merge uh, search here, there would also be a merge button here, which would then cause us to do the request so that we see this global flame graph, uh, graph sorry, ISCO graph across this entire um, infrastructure. So um, that's really, you know, as a, as a user, it may not may not seem like much, but uh, this is a huge milestone in terms of the performance of this of this project. Um, one last thing that I think is super cool um, that we that we worked on. Um, actually, I don't see the. I think that are here. This <laughs> looks like we we need to fix something about the about the color of this, but um, we've got colored uh, flame graphs now. So you can choose which kind of color scheme that you want. Um, and we, we have different kind of color schemes to color code. Um, and the, the indicator that we currently use is which binary does um, uh, a stack frame belong to. And that, that's ultimately what decides the color. Super, super useful. Um, and you can also click on these to then uh, fade out some of the all the other colors to only see essentially this one. All right. I think these are these are some highlights. Definitely not exhaustive, but um, a, a non-exhaustive list of things I'm I'm very excited about. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the Parka V016 release. Um, we did already uh, release a patch release on top of this. Um, release, which uh, kind of fixed an additional thing where if you did a new uh, time selection, it wouldn't automatically rerun the um, the merge query, and that's also that's also been fixed. So if you're already upgraded to zero dot sixteen, please make sure to upgrade to v zero sixteen dot one. All right. I know there are a couple of people here on the call who've, who've worked on this. Uh, release. If you can think of anything that I didn't mention that's maybe your favorite feature um, in this in this release, you can you can speak up. Otherwise, uh, Kim is going to tell tell us about the Parker Agent release, which we also happened to do last week. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Let me just share. Try to share my screen. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. So five days ago, we released Park Agent uh, 0 0.13. It's a rel relatively big one for us because uh, right now, uh, as of this release, we are enabling uh, the dwarf base unwinding by default. Uh, that is huge because uh, we don't see uh, frame uh, pointer based unwinding uh, a lot out in the wild, but like we we know that we can obtain the, this dwarf information with the debug information, and it helps us to support uh, more systems and more languages. Uh, Javier has been working on this for ages right now, and you can see uh, that uh, from an example here, we are actually started to unwind. Uh, for lib Python, for example, just because it has that stack or Ruby or Node.js, so it will help us to uh, basically support these runtimes very, very soon. There were a lot of uh, performance improvements to actually let to enable this feature by default. So huge props to Javier for doing that. The second one we would like to mention is coming from Max. And Max uh, worked in, on this like amazing PR where he actually enabled the JIT, JIT dump format. It's a format uh, that actually some uh, just-in-time compilers uh, emit in the Linux system so uh, for the, the object files that just-in-time compiled. Using that, we can symbolize certain addresses from VMs or the language runtimes. 
as direct result of this PR, right now we also uh, close the Erlang support uh, because now we have the basic uh, Erlang VM support. And we already seen from the community members, if you uh, check the Discord, they are already uh, profiling their Erlang runtime systems and they are just started to benefit from it. So again, this was a huge step for Park Agent. Uh, what else we have? Yes, one last uh, fix that I would like uh, to mention, uh, I think it's worth mentioning, is about fixing the association problems with the child processes. Uh, we thought we fixed that in the previous version uh, using the process namespaces, uh, but it apparently it wasn't a good strategy to actually attack this problem, and right now, uh, we change it totally, and what we do is just we are building a, tr a process tree from uh, a child to its parents, and by doing that, even if the ch uh, children and the parent processes has different namespaces, uh, we can associate them. Uh, this was the problem with the previous implementation. The root uh, process uh, that creates or spawns any container or any uh, process, they have a different namespace and then the children has different children has different namespace so it was a, creating a problem uh, of misassociation. Right now uh, we are associating all the processes within the same C group and as far as we can see, this is working brilliantly. I started PR, but Frederick concluded it. Uh, thanks for that again. And yeah, we already seen that it works. Also, uh, this was uh, this issue has been raised from a community member that they were trying to test against the Erlang VM, and they validated that it actually works. This is more or less it from the Parquet agent release. So give it a, a try, uh, test it. If you see any problems with downloading the uh, archives, we recently discovered a uh, problem with that as well. It's also fixed, uh, but uh, we might want to generate these archives and upload them. Uh, this is missing the version name, uh, and all our documentation is actually referring everything with the version name. So that actually brings me a uh, last topic that I would like to mention about our documentation. Uh, we recently have a doc day in Polar Signals, and uh, you might see some uh, additional pages uh, or uh, some more pages to uh, upcoming pages. We haven't uh, actually uh, merged all the PRs, but check out Parka there for documentation improvements. Uh, we are adding more design uh, pages. Uh, we have a new section about uh, um, like basically promoting the profile uh, visualization and flame graphs. Uh, I'm working on a, a blog post to explain how to read flame graphs and we will add an additional page about it here. So check it out. Uh, and if you have any feedback about uh, parka.dev, uh, please let us know. We also added a quick start page, which you can actually direct if I'm not mistaken, access from the download page. And you will end up in the quick start page. And by using this page, you can either directly install the binary on your system for Parka and Parka agent, or you can just use a container to run and profile your system immediately. Or if you have a cluster, you can just apply our manifest. These are all dynamically generated uh, links that points to the latest stable releases, so you should be covered. I think these are all my uh, headlines that I would like to talk about. Having having you watched click through it just now, I feel like we should probably rename download to quick start on the on the landing page. Um, and the other thing that you were mentioning about the versioning, we should probably just cut another release to fix the problem. OK. We're going to do that. We will uh, release and uh, update that button. I think there were even a couple of additional fixes that landed in Parker Agent already. So we might as well just kind of merge everything from main into the release branch and cut a release from there, I think. 
Okay, good idea. I'm gonna do that. Let us know if you have any feedback after uh, maybe watching the recording. All right, those were our topics for the um, agenda today. Anything else that the room wants to uh, wants to discuss? I know we've we've got a hundred percent. Uh, park on maintainers attendance today, but um, maybe there's something that's still worth discussing in this room. All right. In that case, um, I guess we can uh, call the short one today and um, have a wonderful local time. And from now on, every is it every two weeks or every, every four weeks we have it in this um time slot every four weeks yeah. so we are alternating yeah so in four weeks we'll have it again at this time um hopefully see you all again in two weeks um but if not i'm ho i hope in in four weeks again all right have a wonderful local time see you then bye bye, -bye.